Starting lineup, uniforms, and apparel will present the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League Podcast. Hello once again, everybody. Andrew Rogers here, your uh, host of the WOAA Senior AA Men's Hockey League Podcast. Uh, this is episode number six. It, uh, we got Kyler Nixon coming on the program from the Durham Thundercats. Uh, he'll be uh, joining us here shortly. I uh, want to thank again our uh, promoting sponsor, that's Mitch Scott, for starting lineup, uh, uniforms, and apparel. Uh, we appreciate having him on, and we appreciate everything he does uh, in support of this podcast, and uh, he's been a, a huge help for us, and so we appreciate that. Big, uh, big ups to him. Uh, last, uh, our last episode uh, featured Jordan McKinnon, uh, director uh, from the Sogging Shores Winterhawks. Uh, he had a lot of insightful things to say, which was really great to talk to him because uh, he's been around this league for a very, very long time. He knows what he's talking about. He knows what's going on. He's got a, an eye and an ear on everything, it seems, especially in the community of uh, Sogging Shores and Port Elgin. And uh, he made some really interesting points um, that point to the season upcoming. And either, as much as you want to appreciate the intel and everything that he's saying, it also, you can't help but be fearful of everything that he's saying being true in the fact that uh, there is even more reason to believe that this season could be severely in jeopardy uh, in the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League. And it's concerning for myself because I got so much ideas and so many things that I want to do. Um, you know, from a personal standpoint with this league, that may be all for naught if the season doesn't go uh, off as planned. And uh, who knows what it will look like if it does go off, uh, if it does end up uh, being, um, you know, becoming to fruition here. So we'll have to wait and see for that. But uh, yeah, great conversation, great talking with Jordan. Um, he's been around this league, like I said, a long time. He really knows his stuff. He really knows what he's talking about. And it was just great getting his opinion on things and uh, getting uh, his thoughts. And uh, we really appreciate having him on. And uh, it won't be the last time he's on here for sure because uh, we'll definitely want him on again if there's any more news coming uh, that uh, we feel is important for him to come on and share with us. So, But like I said, onward and upward, um, we got a full slate of guests coming up on the podcast for the next little bit. Um, at least we have the next, uh, I believe it's maybe six guests for sure confirmed. Um, after today's episode, we go with uh, episode number seven, which is Cole Pellet of the Lucknow Lancers. We have uh, Barry Trude coming on from the Shelburne Muskies down the road. Uh, we have Andrew Whalen and Trevor Lord from the Alora Rocks joining us. Uh, we also have, um, from the Clinton Radars, we have uh, Brad Burton and Nathan Ansel. Uh, so it's going to be really exciting. There's a lot of interesting uh, things and a lot of... Uh, you know, excitement going on with the guest list anyways of this podcast, so we're really excited to have all of those guys on and uh, getting to talk with them about the, our league, their respective teams, and uh, what their thoughts are on the season's past and hopes for this upcoming season. There's a lot of things to discuss, but obviously we just want to be able to talk hockey and get to know these guys a little bit better, so very exciting times ahead for the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League podcast. So, without further ado, we're going to go to our guest at this time. Um, he has uh, been a longtime member of this league. He uh, plays for the Durham Thundercats. He wears number six. He is their captain. His name is Kyler Nixon. So, it's at this time that I welcome to the WA Senior AA Men's Hockey League podcast from the Durham Thundercats. Uh, he wears number six. He is their captain. His name is Kyler Nixon. Kyler, thanks for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, Kyler, I mean, it, you know, it was, uh, it's unfortunate that the season came to an end as it is. Uh, first question I got for you, pal, is what, what have you, like COVID has hit everybody a bit differently. Um, how has it affected you? Has, has much changed or is it pretty much still all the same? Um, no change for me. Like I'm still working and, uh, just doing what I can, but, uh, just do, doing the guidelines, staying at home and trying to do the social distancing, seeing friends here and there, but. Nothing too major. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, yeah, so it was quite a season for the Durham Thundercats last year. I mean, uh, you know, I, you, you guys got in there to eighth. You really give Ripley a run. Um, you know, I didn't get a chance to watch any of that series, but really you you could judge by how back and forth it was. Like, how intense was it just to be a part of that? 
Yeah, like it, it was a it was a great series. Like, unfortunately, I wasn't even in a couple of the, like three or four of the games that due to work. Right. But uh, it just showed how much depth their team has, and just showed that uh, if we were more committed this year, that we for sure could have. Uh, did a little more damage, I think, and got more chemistry as the year went on and got that into the playoffs. Right. It was just to start committing in the playoffs. Do you do you feel like when you look back at the season as a whole that it's like how would you how would you grade it? Do you grade it as you know a successful season, given that you know you you made the double A side, you almost made it into the second round against the league's top team. Do you look at that as a positive, or do you look at it more in a bigger picture and say, "Well, it wasn't quite what we wanted it to be." Um, honestly, I I feel like this year was uh, was a bad year for our team, um, but we did have some positives, and uh, I just I think we could have like we we got a lot of good players that came this year and it's like going to help for next year but we just we got to be more committed than what we were last year for sure right um one of your uh one of your teammates he actually ended up joining you guys a little bit into the season uh Riley O'Connell um I asked him just kind of it's his take on you and he says you know he's the man he's such a good guy and probably the best player in our league um what can you speak to to having him come into the fold there? Like, what, you know, how big of an impact was he on the team this year? Yeah, actually, when I found out he was uh, available, I I told my cousin Dean to give him a message just because I knew they were friends, and uh, he came along and he did a great job for our team, and I, he really took off. I feel when he came to the team, if you look at his points, right? I think he was a point of game when he came to our team, but. Um, I think he just fit in. Like he, he's a positive of this year. Like him and Devin Kobold, right. those are two good players that came into our team this year. So, All right. Um, I also had one, another teammate, uh, Andrew Boyle, saw the defenseman with wheels. He wasn't uh, much for words there, but having him, having watched him play twice, I mean, he was he was a huge, like he was a he's a pretty decent little player out there for you guys. Like, can you speak to his uh, his I guess uh, skill and 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 how he fits into this team? Yeah, Boyle, Boyle was a great addition this year as well. Like he came in and he was that third, fourth line guy that is in your face all all the time. And he's definitely not a player someone likes to play against. I would say that. Right on, right on. Um, I got a quote, actually a pretty good one here from uh, your guys' leading scorer this past season. Uh, one of the two Justin Grams who plays on the team. He wears number eight. Uh, his quote was. Uh, yeah, at the time when I was talking to him, he says, I just finished a run with a 15-pound vest on that was inspired by him. Uh, with COVID, I haven't seen him in person, but all the snaps and picks I've seen looks like he's in the best shape of his life since he got his weighted vest. He's already the best player in our league, and he's putting in that kind of work. It shows how good his work ethic is and how he can get everyone else working out uh, so that we're not following even more behind him on the ice. Goes to show there's a reason why he's won everything you possibly can. You might might be one of the only guys who's won Junior C, Junior B, and Junior A. And he says the only reason you didn't win in the Junior A championship, uh, he believes, is because you guys lost Game 7 overtime of the finals to a 15-year-old Mitch Marner. Can you confirm that for us? Yeah, Mitch Marner was uh, <laughs> he was on uh, that St. Mike's team that beat us in Game 7. So I'm <laughs> glad he <laughs> That's kind of yeah, wild. Yeah. He's definitely uh, one of the most underrated players in the league, I would say, because he uh, he just keeps putting up points and just keeps getting better every year. Yeah, that's Justin Graham you're talking about, right? Not Mitch Marner. Yeah. yeah. No, no. <laughs> I think Graham. I think we'd know if Mitch Marner played in the league last year. Have a little more than thirty-four points or whatever shift he had. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, one of the big things that I actually got a lot of feedback on from that Durham and Ripley series was the play of Scott Kuglin. Um, I'll ask you about it in a second. Obviously, he had a quote too here. It says, obviously, uh, Kyler, he's a great player. Uh, he's biased to, because he said for a few years that he is the best all-around player in the league. Not only is he tops for defensemen, he's always the top 10 in scoring. Not many players in our league can boast that. It's a threat to see him play every night. He's a great teammate and a great leader. He can put the team on his back and find a way for us to win almost at will when we need him to step up. And then he recalls a few years ago, you guys were in Ripley and down by two with under two to go. 
you scored twice with the goalie pulled and then scored the OT winner. He says you're fairly mild-tempered but gets very defensive when someone is mistreating his teammates and he takes great pride in being the leader and having his teammates' backs. Can you talk about the play of Scott in that Ripley series, at least from what you heard? Yeah, like uh, Scott came in when he was needed and uh, he definitely was in better shape this year and he uh, it, it showed that just the way he played this year and he's obviously a, a great guy and like for for a guy to be that that age and like continue to do what he does as a goalie is uh, pretty amazing. Right, right. right. Um, we talked to Dean as well. He says uh, it's easy to be teammates with the best player in the league. No one skates like Kyler. He's the lead by his play type captain, and Durham loves having him. Um, it's kind of, it's got to be kind of interesting though. I mean, playing with Dean. I mean, you know, it's a it's obviously. He plays a little bit different style than what you might play, but uh, can you speak to his presence, at least when he's in the lineup? Yeah, like, as a player that I think any team in that in this league would love to have. Like, yeah, there's a lot of guys out there that don't like him, but uh, Dean definitely has more skill than what uh, people give him credit for, too. He uh, He's definitely one of a kind, that's for sure. Fair, fair enough. I mean, that's probably one of the more honest uh honest descriptions of a player i've heard that's for sure uh the last player one i have here is he's a he only got into the one game this past year but he's obviously a mainstay with durham and that's uh bill terpstra he says as a player he's obviously one of the best d-men in the league uh can pick the team up turn it around at any point offensive with his offensive ability and vision it's spectacular you can't, you can't count how many times he's rushed the puck and and finishing off with a goal or an assist on a highlight reel type of goal. As a teammate or person, he's a great guy in the room. He gets along with all the guys and has developed into a quality leader over the years. Every year he seems to come back more and more passionate about playing in the league, and you know he wants to win a championship real bad. That's from Billy. Um, now, I mean, you've been around this team. Like, Do you feel like the team, like, do you feel like the team's at least headed in the right direction? Like, what do you guys, what do you see as uh, the yeah, thing that needs to happen. I, yeah, here I just meant like uh, we just had a down year. Like any team goes through that. Like sure. you got to have it uh, go up, right? Right. So I just feel uh, like we definitely added some pieces this year, and hopefully, yeah, or if there is a season next year. And uh, I definitely, I definitely think we're in the ups. Like we we went to the finals a couple years ago, so it's not right. like too far from being that kind of team again right now i mean you yourself you had a you had a spectacular season i gotta give it to you just like having followed you know and and kept an eye on stats and that sort of thing being a kind of a numbers guy myself but you were right up there you finished tied for the lead amongst defensemen uh in scoring with jordan turkoff from ripley like where do you find your successes like what like what is what what is the the fuel that gets you to the point where you can just find these successes offensively? Um, I I just I make goals for myself really. I uh, I just like to try and hover around like twenty five points a year to uh, to try and help my team win every night. But uh, it, it's just I I just enjoy playing hockey. So I just I, I honestly just go out there and have fun now. Like. I, I only joined senior to have fun, and right. I definitely think uh, not putting pressure on myself anymore to put up points too much has developed me into more of a, a point producer. Right. From the back. Yeah, no, I, I get that. Um, speaking as a guy who's, who's been in the Durham organization for a little while now, like, what would you say to somebody who was looking to join the Senior A League? What would, what would the appeal be? What would the sell be to join Durham? Um, I just, I just know coming to Durham, it's a, it's a small town, uh, like just like many of the other towns that we play in, yeah. in this, but, uh, it's just, it, the community definitely gets behind you and we we're definitely a team that gets decent attendance throughout the year. And like, just with the room we have and the guys we have that have made a core to this team, uh, it's definitely a fun team to be around, uh, with the bus trips and, uh, sure. Just like the fun nights we have and all that. Who who would you say is the funniest guy on the team? Ah, uh, that, that that's a tough one. It would have to go to 
Trevor Houston or Mitch Betts, but oh, uh, yeah. I, I definitely do uh, Trevor. He's okay. always making the guys laugh, that's for sure. So is Betsy, though. So Is is that important in this league to kind of keep it loose and keep it light? Yeah, I, uh, I, I, like, I think there should be a seriousness because you want to win every night. But uh, people don't play senior hockey to uh, come to the room and have have like everyone yelling at you and you're you're just there to have fun and enjoy the game like we're all growing men now and we have jobs and we're not playing to make the nhl or right. anything like that staying loose is uh i think the biggest key to playing in this league sure no i i agree with that um would you say like in, in, let's say for last year let's let's look at that specifically would you say there was any one player that you suited up against that was that particularly gave you headaches or that you kind of looked at as like was going to be an even bigger challenge than any others this past season? Um, like that Ripley series, whenever you were going out against, uh, let's say Garrett Mears or Ben Hughes, yeah, they two really good players, and Ripley's definitely lucky to have two two players like that in their lineup I would say yeah I mean I, I know what you're talking about I mean we you know from having watched like you know the four games that we played them and before the COVID shut down the playoffs there Ben Hughes man he is something he's something to be reckoned with I mean he's a big body but man has he got a good set of hands on him it makes it really tough I can't imagine what it'd be like to be a defender on the ice for sure it's just not only that he's definitely a player that has the skill and he actually works hard too right so yeah that just even tougher to play against a guy like that. Of course, of course. Um, and now, being an offensively gifted defenseman, as you so are with, with your points and your statistics and everything else, do you find that there's a particular goalie in the league that's a little harder to face than, say, any other? Uh, that, that, yeah, like, uh, I haven't really thought of that. Like, uh, one, definitely uh, Tiltenberg's goalie there. Uh, Ta- Tommy Lee? Tommy Lee, he's definitely... Uh, a goalie, I don't know how he does it at his age. He uh, <laughs> he always have our number, though. That's for sure. Sure. No, I I got that. I got that. Um, so I guess with the uns like, how fearful are you about the uncertainty of whether or not next season will go off here with without a hitch, or like like, are you concerned that the season may end up not coming to fruition? Yeah, like if you just read through the news, you're you kind of see that it it is like a good possibility that the season's not going to probably happen just because you're going to have to go through so many, uh, so many boundaries here for, for fielding a team and right. putting, putting uh, fans in the stands. Like it, it almost doesn't make sense for some teams to have a season if you can't have any fans because that's where you make your money. Of, yeah, of, no, I I agree with you. It's just it, that is the tough part about it is is the unknown, the uncertainty, the fact that this league is so great in the in that you know it's it's one of the best leagues that I've ever been around and been a part of, and uh, mm-hmm. the fact that last season in the playoffs was abruptly grinded to a halt, and then to not even have a season potentially this upcoming year is is pretty devastating. I mean, at at this point, like you can't help but feel for all the players, the people, the management, everybody around it. I mean, I can't imagine all the people that put in, you know, so much hard work with the Durham Thundercats organization. Yeah, like uh, Donny Donny Tremble, he uh, he went through a tough year personally for himself, and uh, yeah. the amount of work he puts in for our team is uh, truly amazing. Yeah. Uh, like I can't say enough about him. So I I definitely feel for him. Yeah, um, if in uh, if there is a season and it does go off like you know any other, if I mean obviously with probably more or less a couple of adjustments, you can only imagine um, for the Durham Thundercats to be successful next year. What what would you say needs to happen? How does that? How do you guys move on the upward? Um, I, I just come in and uh, like it's a new year and. Uh just have everyone a little more committed like doesn't mean you make every practice but like just means like showing up the games and having a consistent lineup like that that chemistry needs to be developed during the season 
to have a deep run in the playoffs, I feel. So that is the biggest thing is commitment and chemistry. And uh, I think we'll do just fine then. Well, there you have it. Commitment and chemistry. I love it. Uh, Kyler, it's been a pleasure having you on. I, I've said this to you before, but I'm a big fan of yours and your game because it is really exciting to watch. And, uh, you know, definitely look forward to uh, another season if it does happen, uh, being able to come back out to Durham and uh, watching you guys play and just watching you electrify. So uh, thank you very much for coming on here today, pal. It's been great talking to you. Yeah, thanks for having me, and thanks for doing uh, everything you do for the league. It's uh, been truly amazing. Thanks. Yeah, not a problem. It's been great talking to you. We'll talk again. Once again, we want to thank uh, our, our guest for this episode of the podcast, uh, Durham Thundercat defenseman Kyler Nixon. We appreciate him stopping by and talking hockey with us. Um, we, so on our next uh, episode on this podcast, it's uh, episode number seven. It uh, comes by the way of the Lucknow Lancers, a little bit of representation from them. He was our leading scorer last year. Uh, our guest uh, on the next episode of the podcast is from the Lucknow Lancers. His name is Cole Pellet. Uh, we look forward to talking with Cole and uh, getting his thoughts and having a little chat with him. We really look forward to having him here on the program. Um, if you guys want to be a guest right here on the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League podcast, please drop me a line. Um, I want to say that I really do appreciate all the viewership. Um, it's amazing the amount of feedback and the amazing the amount of uh, viewership that I've seen in these episodes that keep getting uploaded to YouTube. Um, you know, they are coming fast and furious, but I do appreciate the fact that you guys are going, subscribing to my YouTube channel, and you're, subscri and you're watching these videos. Um, some are a little longer than others, sure, I get it. Um, but uh, they are a really good watch and uh, strongly encouraged if you are a fan not only of hockey but of the WOA Senior AA Men's Hockey League. Um, there's not a whole lot going on, but hopefully that'll change soon and uh, we can get back to a little bit of normalcy here. Um, there's, uh, it, it seems like things are trending in the right direction, so um, we can only hope that uh, sports will become more prominent as we're used to having it before this whole COVID pandemic hit, uh, uh, hit the world. Um, so like I said, Cole Pellet's going to be the next guest, so we look forward to having him on. Uh, that comes away this Wednesday. Um, this, so that's going to do it for episode number six. That puts a wrap, so, a wrap on it. Um, I am Andrew Rogers. I am the host of the program, the WA Senior AA Men's Hockey League Podcast. We will see you on Wednesday. Thank you for joining us, and take care.